and welcome to a few tutorials about how to use Excel. Some of you might already know how to use Excel really, really well, and some of these tutorials you're like, seriously, you're asking me to do that? And others you'll be like, oh, thank you, no one's ever explained this to me before. Wherever you are, it's okay, don't worry about it. Um, watch the videos, hopefully they'll be helpful. Sometimes in the labs I'm gonna reference them because there's gonna be some skills that we're gonna be learning here, and you'll have a chance to practice them as well doing some homework. So we're gonna start at very basic level. Spreadsheet, lovely thing, organizing in columns and rows. The thing about a spreadsheet is you have to understand how they were designed. And they were really designed for business purposes, not for scientific purposes. So we're kind of like shoving ourselves into places where we weren't supposed to be to begin with. So we sometimes have to massage Excel and make it work the way we want it to. It does great things. And I would say a, a good chunk of scientists in the world use Excel to analyze their data. Not because it's the best tool, but because it's universally available. It's on just about every computer that you're gonna run across. And <clears throat> Google Sheets works very very much similar. So a lot of what we do here applies also to Google Sheets uh, with maybe subtle changes. So the first thing you want to remember, like I said, is data is always organized by columns. So I never want to organize things when I'm going to be working with a bunch of data where I put some data here, some data here, some data here, some data here, and then try to make it look pretty in Excel. Excel is not really made for making data look pretty. It's made for making pretty looking business charts, but not really for data looking pretty, especially if you're doing scientific data. So my general rule of thumb, thumb is one column, one set of data. I break that, it's, not, it's a rule of thumb, it's not a hard and fast rule. But let's just start entering some data. Now the thing to remember in Excel is you always want to label your data. So I wouldn't just start entering one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, right there. I'd wanna say, what kind of data is this? And you're always gonna do that in the first row of it because Excel, you will find, in most cases, will ignore the first row when doing things or use the first row as a, a, a title for things on plots and stuff like that. So if you've labeled it well, you've actually done a lot of the work already. So let's just go ahead and put in, you know, some data where we're talking about hours worked and money earned, okay? So hours worked and money earned. And you know, I spelled worked wrong, so I've got to go up there and uh, fix my worked. And so let me go ahead and do that. Oops, and so I'm trying to manage a couple screens at the same time and it doesn't always work. Okay, so I've got hours work and money earned. So there we go. And I'm gonna start and say, well, if I work a half an hour, what am I gonna earn? And you might be like, well, you know, minimum wage in California is I, I think uh, going up. Let's just make up a number. We'll not earn minimum wage. We'll, we'll earn a good salary uh, coming out of here. We're gonna earn ourselves $65 an hour. So if we, well, yeah, let's go ahead, $65 an hour. So, you know, we're like, okay, half an hour, if you're gonna divide that by two, so $32.50, okay. And you know, you could do all that kind of stuff. One hour is gonna be $65 and things like that. But what if you were trying to figure out something, you were like, well, I don't know how much money I'm gonna earn. And so I, I wanna change all these numbers, right? Then you'd have to go back through and you'd have to change all these numbers manually. The point of a spreadsheet is really to make those kind of calculations easier on yourself when things might change, when you might have to recalculate stuff, when there's variables involved. There's a lot of things built into Excel that are gonna help us with that. The first thing is, how do I make this series of data right here, instead of having to type out 0.51, 1.52, 2.53, is there a way that Excel can help me with that? And the answer is yes, okay? So it turns out, if you have a very repeatable set of data, which often we have for our X data on a plot, right? The X data is usually one, two, three, four, five, or 0 0.003, 0 0.004, 0 0.005, whatever it is, it's usually very predictable and very regular. And so Excel has a way, if I take those first two numbers in my series, and right now it's adding 0.5 to each one of them, you know, it's not you know, one or two or three, it's 0.5, it's kind of an odd number, but Excel will be like, okay, if you want to, I will just keep adding 0.5 as long as you want to. So what I did is I used my keyboard here, but you can also use the mouse, and select those two boxes there. And on the very bottom right, it 
a little dot appears. Now, I highly encourage you, if you've got a big enough screen to have Excel open in one window while you've got me open in another window, so you can actually be trying these things as I do it. Uh, this is not going to be one of those experiences that you learn a lot by watching. It's going to be experiences that you learn by doing. And if I talk too fast, just take the video speed down a little. I'll sound funny, but you might be able to uh, keep up with me talking. So a little dot appears down there. Not this little one that, that talks about auto formatting, but this little tiny one there. And if I grab that, you'll notice my cursor turns into a plus sign. And as I grab down, you can see that Excel is telling me I'm going to fill this in using your series. And let's go down to eight hours. And it automatically fills in my stuff. Now, by default, Excel doesn't do formatting of numbers very well, because you'll notice it's 0.51, 1.52, 1 2.53. 2 and for people like chemists who care about significant figures, that's like, you know, like making me want to tear my hair out. So formatting numbers in Excel is also very important. Now, it's very tempting, people do this a lot, where they just format the numbers that they want to format. And so they highlight these ones that we just highlighted, and they go up here and they use the formatting tools in Excel and say, hey, I want this as a number, and I want to have either more or less decimals. And that's very easy to do. And you know, you'll notice, that on, on row two there, when I've got one decimal showing after, it shows 0.5. When I've got zero decimals, it rounds to one. That's just display. Excel always stores the actual number deep inside. So if I were to ever use that row, row A2, for a calculation, it would use 0.5. It would not use the rounded number I display. It would use the number that's in storage, which is 0.5 in this case. That's also true when you have decimals that are you know, 0.86133377444412. You might display that as 0.867, but Excel's using that entire number in all of its calculations. That's important to keep in mind. So there we go. We now have a little more reasonable thing where, except for that first one, all of our significant figures are the same, but at least they're the same number of digits after the decimal. Now, the problem is, if I go down here and I type 9, well, Excel did it. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it surprises me. Um, oftentimes, that doesn't work. So what I always encourage people to do, and you're like, Professor, you just showed me that, that it works. It doesn't always work. I always encourage you to do, whenever you're doing something, do it to the entire column. So if I want to format every number in that column, I'm going to select the entire column by clicking on the column letter there and choosing a number format and telling it how many decimals I want. And that way, even when I add data later, it will format that data properly. Um, I'm not even sure why it did it properly this time, because usually it doesn't. All right, now we've got to go back to this money earned column. This money earned column, right? We don't want to have to calculate all that. That's the reason we have calculators, and Excel is just a big calculator. So how do we tell Excel that we want to make sure that we are multiplying all of those hours worked on the left by 65? Well, we use formulas in that case. And in Excel, you always start a formula with the equals sign. I wish I could make this box up here bigger. I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. Um, I wish I could make that a little bit bigger. No, nope, it's not going to let me. So an equal sign is how you always start off a formula. And then you can just reference any cell you want in Excel and um, <coughs> tell it, oh, I would like to reference that cell as part of my calculation. So if I want to say, oh, I'm going to earn $65 an hour, and that's always times the number of hours, I'm going to just put equal 65 times, which is the star key, shift 8. And then I'm going to click over here, and it's Excel says A2. It says whatever the cell contents of A2 is, I'm going to multiply that. And I get 32.5, the same number I got before. And since this is money, I'm going to go ahead and format this entire column as a money type format in the United States, because that's where I am. And you'll notice it does that with the dollar signs and the two decimals. Notice it didn't try to format my money earned. Right? It didn't try to do that because it understands that that is a title. So that's why we can put titles there. Excel will mostly ignore them. One other thing I just noticed here is my hours worked. looks like hours work with an E, right? If I have no idea how to spell. Because Excel will cut off numbers. Money earned doesn't look like it's cut off until I put something in C, and then it gets cut off. So one of the things we can also do is we can make columns wider. We can make columns less wide, depending on how we want them. Um, one real good trick is if I want to make A just the right width to fit my data, I just double click on it. And Excel will automatically make it just wide enough to be able to fit whatever data is in there. So that's a nice little time-saving trick. All right, so money earned, 
50, 65, that was still manually entered. And so okay, okay, oh, equals this, or what is it, 65 times that. I use the keyboard a lot, so you'll see I just didn't use my mouse. When I was in my formula, I just typed the left arrow and it went to that cell to the left, which was A3. I can do down arrows, I can do up arrows, right arrows, left. The only thing I can't reference is myself, um, but I do that. Okay. Now, that would be tedious if you had to type that one in every time. So of course, we're in computer, so you could use copy paste. So I'm just gonna use the keyboard for that. I'm gonna hit copy, I'm gonna hit paste. Oop. Sorry, I think I hit the, uh, there we go. Copy, paste, paste, paste. That's also a bit tedious, especially you know if you had 100 data points that you were trying to calculate something about. If you have three or four, you could do copy paste. So is there a way that's a little bit faster? And the answer is yes this little autofill box is going to be our way of making it faster. So this autofill box, as I drag it down, what Excel does is it says, hey, you want to fill in these other things with something very similar to what's in that box. But Excel's fairly smart about that. And it says, not only do you want to fill it in, but since you referenced a cell in A2, my guess is if you move that down to the next row, you probably want to reference the cell in A3. And so if I go ahead and I drag this down here, it will automatically fill in. And you'll notice in row three, it's referencing B3. In row four, seven, it's referencing B, A7. In row 13, it's referencing A13. So Excel does that fill in for me, and that's great. Okay, so it's a real time saver to be used to that down fill idea. Now, what I realized is I wasn't actually earning $65 an hour. I was a superstar. I should be earning $95 an hour. And so I have to go back in and I have to change this to $95 an hour. And then I've got to go in and I can drag that down. Notice one thing Excel doesn't do that I really wish it did is have a set formula that automatically fills in whenever I change that first one. It doesn't. And so what we're going to talk about is how we can kind of help ourselves there. So if I change that first one, oops undo. If I change that first one, it now says 95 times A2, but the second one still says 65 times A3. So I've got to go to that little box down there. I've got to fill this guy down to get those to update to my new salary. Oh, but wait, I'm going to get a PhD and I'm going to earn $120. You can see that this would get really tedious if I was trying out different things. So one thing that Excel can also do is you know reference more than one cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up here a box called hourly rate, and that's going to be uh, $120, I decided. So my hourly rate is now $120 per hour. And what I want to tell this Excel is I'm going to use that hourly rate to calculate how much I earn, and then I can change it. So I go back over here to this first cell. You always edit the first cell. Always edit the first cell and drag it down. Um, <clears throat> it just makes life easier. So now instead of 95 times A2, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to delete the 95. And now I can click over here on E1, and now it's E1 times A2. So it's going to be 120 times 0.5. For those of you who know what you're doing, I am doing something wrong now, yes. Uh, but I will fix it in a moment. <clears throat> so now in a half an hour, we're going to earn $60. Always remember when you change a formula to drag it down and apply it to the... Hey, why did I get a bunch of dashes? Right? Why dash in this case, since it's a money format, means zero. Why am I getting a bunch of zeros there? And I look, here's a lovely thing about debugging in Excel. You double click on the cell and it'll highlight the cells that it's um, getting the formula from. I look and it, it's getting this right, but it's now going down here and trying to get from E2 because it was like thinking, well, if you want it from one in the next row, you probably want it from two in the next row, you want it from three because that's what it does by default. So I wish there was a way I could tell Excel that no, 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 I want this one to always be constant, but I want this one to change as I go down the row. And lo and behold, there is. So A2, I want that to change and go A3, A4, A5, A6 as I go, but I want E to stay the same. And what do I want to stay the same? I want to have the one stay the same. I always want E1. And so if you put a dollar sign, you have to do that manually. It's a typing thing. There's no way that I know of that there's like key to press or whatever while you do it. You have to put that dollar sign in there manually. And that dollar sign tells Excel, don't change that number as you fill something down. And so it's always going to be E1 times A2, then times A3, then times A4. And if I drag that down, doo -doo -doo -doo, now it's updated my new salary. Now the cool thing is, if I decide, oh, you know, really, I am only going to be a minimum wage person and $12 an hour, 
I can figure out how much I'm earning. Or if I say, hey, I'm gonna go be a heart surgeon or a lawyer and I earn $1,500 an hour, I can see how much I earn in uh, eight hours. So it's very easy to <coughs> change things in Excel. And that's what you really wanna try to set up your data for. You wanna try to set up your data in Excel so that when you need to make changes, because you will, you make the least number of changes possible and Excel does all the work for you. So that's some simple uh, filling formulas down, changing the widths of columns, entering a series of numbers, referencing other cells, making them constant, right? So we were able to make them constant by using the uh, dollar sign. Now Excel can also fill to the right and to the left if you wanna make a column constant. I didn't need to in this case. Um, but let's say uh, I wanted to make E constant, right? Is I put a dollar sign in front of E, and now no, even if I fill to the right, Excel won't uh, change it. I don't need that for now, so I'm going to leave it. By the way, for those of you who are keyboard oriented rather than uh, mouse oriented, if I've got B1 there and I shift click all of those guys and I want to fill down, right? Instead of grabbing this little guy and pulling it down, I can just select the cells I want. I hit um, Control D or Command D on a Mac and it'll fill all those down. Uh, I use that a lot myself and you'll see me probably use that as we go forward. All right, so we've now referenced that. We reminded you that we generally want to have things in whole columns because uh, <clears throat> it'll make things a little bit easier to analyze later. The difference there is we had some sort of constant here. If we had other constant, I might put it here. Right. And so sometimes I have a couple columns that I just store constants in. You'll notice I did put a spacer column in there. It's nice to have spacer columns because it kind of separates out things that you're doing. You can make your spacer column a little more narrow if you want to be able to see more things on a page. But I do like spacer columns between sets of things. The other thing I want to talk about data organization is sheets. It's really, really useful to use sheets in Excel. And what sheets are is, right, this is one sheet. It's got some data in it, things like that. But on a lot of our experiments, we're running the same experiment over and over again, maybe with slightly different data each time, so that we can't use the same x-axis each time because the instrument might have used a slightly different x-axis for one run because it went for 105 seconds, as another run which only went for 103 seconds. And so, or maybe there was a start time difference. So it's really hard to use just the same x-axis over and over again. But we really wanna keep all that data together. We don't wanna be having one piece of data in one file, one piece of data in another file, because it really makes it hard to keep track of everything. So one of the things I use rather frequently in Excel is down here, is I use and organize all of my data in sheets. Now sheets just means you can have other spreadsheets inside the spreadsheet. So I have a sheet here that's called experiment one, trial one. Experiment two, trial one. Experiment three, trial one. And my Arrhenius plot, which we'll talk about later on. So I highly encourage you as you're working with your data to try to organize it in sheets. That keeps it all in one file and allows us to do things like cross-reference data from different experiments and compile them into one table, which can be really, really useful. So that's a little bit about data organization in Excel. In our next series, we're gonna talk about how to make plots in Excel and kind of what I expect from plots that you're making in Excel as we go along. So I hope this was a little bit of a helpful introduction to Excel. Anytime you've got questions on how to do something in a spreadsheet, I'm happy to help you. I love spreadsheets. I use them all day for all sorts of things. Um, they're actually quite fun if you uh, do them right and if you really love numbers, which I really love numbers. So <clears throat> I'm happy to answer questions in Excel and uh, help you learn how to do things that you want to do. All right, thanks so much.